Hey, it's Greg with B17 Archaeology. We're up in Tulare, California, and we're here with Preston's Pride. Now, we actually preserved this plane about two, two and a half years ago, and she still looks amazing. And as, in this episode, I'm going to introduce you to the two gentlemen who keep it looking absolutely amazing. Now, this is probably the best project we've ever done. We've had so much. We had uh, barbecues every night. We had cocktails. We just had a great time. And from what she looked like to where she is now, absolutely night and day. So as we come through this episode, take a look, watch this episode, and thank you for coming in to B17 Archaeology. As I'm standing here, this is the actual true nose art based by photos that would have been on for this particular B-17. Now she was built too late to for any action during World War II, but her action, her history is 1946 in the Bikini Atoll with Operation Crossroads, the first atomic testing done after the war. Two bombs were dropped, Abel and Baker. Now Abel was dropped and detonated a thousand feet above the ocean Baker was draw or was actually submerged and was 90 feet below surface. So there's two different tests for it. Her role, she was a mothership. Now it was a one-to-one -one ratio. This B-17, uh, a pilot would actually sit in the nose where the bomb to deer would normally be and would fly a drone ship. Now the drone ship would fly in and around the cloud, collect particles for testing. This one was 10 to 15,000 feet above the drone, and it had a full crew that was flying. This is the largest artifact from Operation Crossroads, 1946, that is still in existence. Now, she came to Tulare in 1958, and just north of us, landed, parked in the field, and within days of her landing, parts and everything were started disappearing. A local businessman uh, who owned Perry's Cafe decided to save the plane. He towed it from its original spot over by his cafe, put a fence around it, and being a cafe and a truck stop, people were always there. So there was less uh, savaging, less stealing of this airplane. About 10 years later, the Air Force said, hey, where the hell's our airplane? They didn't realize it had been moved and they said that it must be moved back. Now, kind of a funny story is we introduced, uh, or we uh, actually met in the episode, uh, Ron Perry, and he told us his dad's story. Now, when they brought the plane there, they towed a single tractor across the field and they parked the plane. He put a fence around it, and when they came to take the plane back, he said, you're not touching my fence. He made them go all the way around instead of taking the shortcut. Now in that 10 years, buildings were added, trees grew, they actually had to grease, put plywood down, grease it, spin the B-17, drag it sideways, re-spin it, spin it, and then tow it back to here. So now we, we are just here off of Avenue 200, south of the original hangar, and it's been here. And within a couple weeks of after being here, it's a crazy ass off ramp. A truck plowed in, ripped off the wing from engine one and the stabilizer. They repaired it. They uh, put uh, stone jacks on it to hold it up. They got it all fixed. They put a nice chain link fence around it. And then a number of years later, a second truck came, crashed through the fence, took out the wing, and it was repaired cosmetically, uh, and then with the insurance money, the AMVETS put the steel fence around to help protect it. So, a couple other close calls, cars have come close, the chain link fence has stopped it, and we're next to the freeway. So, it's an incredible story for this particular airplane. No World War II history, but she is a veteran of the atomic testing in the Proving Grounds in the South Pacific. The other B-17s that have any atomic testing, unfortunately 909 was out in Yucca Valley. 
uh, Sentimental Journey actually was a mothership in Operation Greenhouse, as well as Piccadilly Lily was in Operation Greenhouse as well. But this, the first atomic testing is Preston's Pride, the B-17 known as Preston's Pride, sits here in Tulare off of Highway 99 in Central Valley, California. You can visit her 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and she is gorgeous. She's been polished by Team Shine. The original markings been put on. On the other side, a tribute to the man who brought her here, Maurice Preston, a local war hero, commander of the 379th Bomb Group, uh, actually took a huge role in bringing the plane here. Tulare wanted a monument. They tried to get a steam engine because trains in the era were huge to Tulare and the agricultural. They couldn't get it. They reached out to the local graduate from the local high school here and he helped. He was the main reason this B-17 is here. If it wasn't for him, this B-17 would have went to Kingman, most likely scrapped, never, never would have been seen again. So he took part in flying it here. Mixed stories, did he really fly it here? He was ordered not to because he was still active service. He and his son actually flew it to Tulare from March Field down in Southern California to Visalia. Supposedly they got out, it flew to Rakin Field and then it was towed here. Talking with locals, the true story is he flew the plane in. So he brought this B-17 to his hometown as a tribute to all the men and women who served in World War II from Tulare County. It's a great honor, it's a great tribute. This is one of the best projects we've ever done. And uh, I, I just can't say enough about this B-17 and the atomic testing. So this is the interior of Preston's Pride. And when we did the uh, actual uh, video a couple years ago, nothing was in here. So these oxygen tanks, Neil and Carl, which I'll introduce you to you in, in a bit, actually acquired these so that we can actually do the interior. And I haven't told them, but I have an APU unit that actually is going to sit right here and I'm going to be giving it to the restoration project. So you can see it, and there's a step here. So, yeah, that, that's a good place to be. Been there, done that. Uh, but you can actually see, now this is the racks that would have carried all the control units for the drone controls. And you can see they're working on the flooring for the radio room. And again, Radio Room had more racks for computers uh, that would allow for the drone control ships. So as I try not to fall, walking through the bomb bay. Now again, no World War II activity, so these handrails were actually put on so that the crew members can walk freely from the front to the back. And this is the cockpit. Now, it did have a plywood floor <laughs> when we did this, um, but work is being done. It's being restored back to 1946 Operation Crossroads. And instead of going down into there, I'm just going to show you right here. So instead of the Norton bomb site, there was a gyroscope type telescope here. This is where the pilot would have flown or sat when he was flying a drone B-17 that flew in and around the mushroom cloud. So it was a one pilot, one B-17 mothership to one B-17 drone. And it's really hot in here, but they're doing an absolutely amazing job. Neil and Carl, uh, they're both uh, came out here. Carl's one who actually did the nose art. 
And let me walk you back this way so you can see both sides. So Carl did the nose art for us. And Neil came out one day and said, hey, I'd like to help. I grew up around here. And I remember seeing this plane as a kid playing around it. He's never left. And that's what it's about. It's about preserving history. It's about local history. And it's about... Nice step. It's, it's about everything. It's about preserving history. If we don't preserve history, history is lost forever. So I'm going back outside. It's crazy hot in here. And uh, let's get uh, Neil and Carl and they can tell their story. Hey everybody, my name is Carl Strand. Uh, I'm part of the uh, Preston Pride Project here with uh, Neil Walden. We're the uh, famed bomber boys as known here in Tulare. Uh, just a little thing about me. I've lived here since I was born in 1961. Uh, I've loved this airplane ever since I can remember seeing it back in 65. Uh, came out here as a kid, played in it, romped in it, uh, could do anything in it other than take things out of it or my dad would whip my butt. Uh, me and Neil have been working on this aircraft uh, since Greg handed it off to us uh, about two years ago. Uh, we're currently working on the inside of the aircraft to restore the radio operator room uh, and the uh, cockpit floors. Get those done first and then we'll uh, continue on from there. Uh, I'm going to pass it on for a second to uh, my partner in crime, Neil Walden. Damn, Carl, he said about everything that I was going to say. That's the bad part about it, letting you go first. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all good. Um, yeah, we're, we're here on a mission to preserve history, make sure people know about what our veterans did and why this stuff is here. And, it, you know, and it's just a love of aviation and just trying to get the, the younger generation to know what or how we got the, the freedoms that we have here today. And this is a perfect example of it. And yeah, it's just been a love. You know, we we can't wait to we come out and we're able to work on this thing for a couple, two or three hours at a time. We work strictly on donation money. People stop by here going down the freeway and they just are just astounded that this is here and is being taken care of this is the most seen b-17 in the world anywhere else you're going to have to go pay money at a museum here you just pull off the freeway and hopefully we're here you may get to go inside and see what's going on and um, we we couldn't let it stop at just the exterior we're kind of wild and crazy and we want to get it to the point where you can stop and you can go in this thing and and see just how it was because we are aimed to restore all the vandalism and the destruction that happened to this plane for the past since 1958 there may have been some good times but it's seen the worst and now it's going to see the best and we're working very hard it may take us three or four years but we got something to do and uh, it's, it's been great we would thank Greg Sestatos and everybody that has been involved with this and the the pats on the back we don't want no pat on the back we just want people to know what we're here for okay that guy kind of got serious now <laughs> yeah too serious <laughs> now carl mentioned boom boom in the airplane <laughs> so our friend larry's not here who has a great boom boom story um and since you guys grew up around this plane any other uh, crazy activities that went on the plane with you two uh, maybe a maybe couple of girlfriends. Girl. Okay, some girlfriends. <laughs> all right, let's all raise our hands. So we all had a good time. Right. Um, now, again, they mentioned that this is all in donations. Neil and Carl work here in town. They're born and raised Tularians. They do all this as a love for it. So let's reach out. Um, what's the name of your, you have the, the Facebook page or web page? We have the, the Preston Pride Project on Facebook. And Greg started that with Shannon Mucko, and we've just, we add to it, and our Preston Pride project is to bring history. Back Here's our shirt. Education, preservation, dedication, and I got out of line there. It's like Anna's all over <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> and so. I have no anesthesia, I swear. Maybe, <laughs> maybe about six cures light, but we're okay. So but if we it, mention, it's all that. We mentioned Anna's because 
when we did a, a round table with everybody who uh, we met at Anna's who helped out either coming to work or bought us food or just came and hang out with us. This is actually a watering hole. Um, I can't tell you how many uh, shots of tequila, how many beers have uh, been consumed during this project. Now Team <laughs> Shine came out and polished this entire airplane. So they're actually gonna be helping with the B-29 down at Marchfield Air Museum. Flagship 500, formerly Three Feathers. They're gonna be doing that in October. So if you wanna help out down there, please help out. If you wanna help out here in Tulare, California, go to the Facebook page, shoot them a message. You can help out financially, or you can come up, hang out in an airplane, get dirty, and just have some fun and help us preserve history. So this is the nose art that would have been on in 1946, Operation Crossroads. Now the 58th wing was the group that took part in the atomic testing. The 509th was the bomb group that won the war because it's the one that dropped the atomic bomb. So the tribute to Maurice Preston, the Triangle K is the 379th bomb group. And while he was there, he was Colonel Maurice Preston. He was in England from 42 to 44 with the 379th. And it only seemed fitting to give him a tribute since he is the one who basically single-handedly brought the plane here back to Tulare, California, his hometown. It, it's just incredible. Now Team Shine was out here two years ago and other than the ash from the local fires, you can see that she's absolutely still just gorgeous. Now the wings are, are painted because they were painted during Operation Crossroads. They were not a natural aluminum. So they were painted and what we did is we just painted them. And again, we used Rust-Oleum paint. We used it down at Marchfield Air Museum and it worked, it held up, it makes it look good. So we decided to do the same thing. Now I had mentioned uh, the truck. This is the last truck that hit it and it was better than 15, 20 years ago, and it is still there. So it's just kind of a reminder why this steel fence has been put up. It's not the prettiest, but it sure definitely protects her. And this is Preston's Pride. In 1946, when this B-17 was taking part of the atomic testing Operation Crossroads, a French clothing designer was working on a new bathing suit. Now, because of the atomic testing that took place in the Bikini Atoll, the designer came up with the name for his new bathing suit. And it came up to be the Bikini. And he chose the Bikini because he said that like the atomic bomb, the Bikini was small but powerful. And that's how the bikini became the bikini. So for all those guys, thank you for the French designer. Thank you for the atomic testing. Because every time we go to the beach or the pool, we can appreciate what you did and what you did for all of us. So as we tell this story, once again, of the B-17 known as Preston's Pride up here in Tulare, California, uh, we hope you enjoyed the history. Now, one thing we didn't get into is the atomic veterans. Now, during the atomic testing, there were over 250,000 veterans that took part in the atomic testing from the deserts of New Mexico and Nevada to the proving grounds in the South Pacific. And most of those veterans are unrecognized for their service. The VA chooses not to recognize ionized radiation as a VA benefit. Now, I'm not trying to get on the VA's shit list for this, but the bottom line, these stories need to be told. These are American veterans who took part, they did what they were told to do, and because they received ionized radiation, which could be prostate cancer, and the majority of men over the age of 50 receive prostate cancer anyway, so they choose not to do it. But if you're lucky enough to get leukemia, then they will give you actually benefits. So. 
again, the VA, this is nothing against you. This is, this is above you, but we need to take care of our veterans, whether they are Vietnam veterans or World War II veterans or our atomic veterans. We need to step up. We need to make sure that these guys that put on their uniform so that we can all be safe in this great country, we have to do that. I'm not a political person, but when you are able to meet some of these atomic veterans and you sit with them, you hear their stories, you feel their pain, and you understand what they're going through, and they never questioned it for a second. Now, if you look at the videos from 1946, Operation Crossroads, they're in shorts, a t-shirt, and they got a ball cap. They don't have a respirator, they don't have gloves. Okay, kind of new in the atomic thing. In 1958, during the uh, Operation Hardtack, they're still wearing the same equipment. So we're finding out that we didn't know anything about radiation from 1946 to 1958. I find that kind of interesting. We need to help our veterans. You can check out NAV, which is the National Association of Veterans of Atomic, or some acronym, and see what you can do to help these veterans. I've met a lot of veterans. They're incredible. They, they don't hold anything against the service, their country, for what they did. It's time we step up and we take care of them. Do what you can. Reach out. Talk to a congressman. Whatever we need to do to help our veterans, that's what we need to do. So thank you for allowing me to vent. Please remember to like us, subscribe to the channel, and remember B-17 Archaeology is a cool place to be.